Hello everybody, welcome to another On the Workbench here. We've got ourselves a Reaper figure. Haven't done one of these in a little while. And I'm pretty sure that's that's a Werner Clock sculpt. I recognize that face anywhere and the way the armor is sculpted. Kind of interesting thing, the way you can just recognize sculptors and their styles so easily. So this is just a typical bark and branch base here. Tree bark, a little bit of a twig right here. What I want to do though is I want to put some of these can you even yeah I think you can there we go. See those little butterflies there? Actually printed on vellum. This is by Wicked Elf. Now you can see that. There we go. And what we want to do is colors may not be the same but we want to replicate something like this. This is a recent Dark Sword video that I did for the Patreon page. And can you see right there? See that monarch butterfly? Oh, wait. And another monarch butterfly on that bush there. See, there's one right there. See where that needle is pointing? And oh, look, there's one on her hand. I thought it might be fun to do that. Something that's a little less monarch themed. But as I said, this is a recent Dark Sword tutorial. I think this was episode 26, believe it or not. I want to try doing some of this foliage too, some of the cut leaves, but this time I want to add the cut leaves to my branch over here. So we've got some more of those. I think we're going to do a basically a purple-ish type color scheme here on this to set it off from maybe the orange butterflies, the green. We also have some yellow foliage that we're going to be using, some flowers. I'm thinking about maybe doing a little bit of a magenta glow on this little stone right here. We have a variety of paints. Typical palette right here. Oh, I just remembered I gotta move over here, make sure I can see the oh hey, first last boy, yeah, you know, it's been so long since I painted one of his miniatures. And uh hello uh let's see. Rope. If I mispronounce a name, feel free to correct me. We've got some Pro acrylics out here. We've got some typical Reaper paints out here, the clears, the liners. We've got a few different Green Stuff World intensity inks that I want to throw out there. So it's going to be, and, oh, and we have some of our contrast paints. We have a shyish purple here. We've got the Wildwood. Who knows? I even have the Fire Slayer flesh out there. But let's try a few different things here. In fact, we are going to start out, this is the wild wood here, and we're just going to get this right in. I'm going to actually throw this, throw this on, and then as it dries a little bit, I'm going to grab my glove. Might even throw a little bit of the shyish purple in there. I always try to, always try to have some kind of a variety in these things. Never just keep throwing down the same color over and over again. Let them mix together. And with the foliage here, you definitely want to get some paint on that. Yeah, you know, let's just this is going to follow the usual for the most part shaded base coat technique. Hey James, how's it going? Yeah, there was another reaper figure that I was going to do but it just, for whatever reason, the pin just kept kind of spinning around. And I was just worried that in the middle of a live session, it wouldn't stay connected to the pin. Because it's a big, heavy figure. That can happen sometimes. Normally, like this, they're connected to the base. And it's a little bit easier to manage. There. Now, if you're wondering what these little guys are here, these little cups here that I'm painting on them, they're just little watercolor basins cheap little plastic things you can get them on Amazon no problem real cheap but they're good for things like contrast paints especially at eight dollars a container really not something you want to be tipping over and spilling all over the place so what we'll do is we'll grab let's see which one of these we're gonna use let's try the this is the walnut brown here so I'm going to stick it in this last little, can you see it's off in the corner there? So we're just right in there. 
You can see that's a liquid paint. See, if I put it out on the palette, it just kind of starts going all over the place. There's lots of fun colors we can use. So I'm going to see if I can find a quick little glove to put on here. It's not to protect me or the miniature. It's really just a neutral color against the miniature because the lights tend to bounce off of the skin color. I'm going to grab some of that shyish purple here. And this is, for those that are familiar with this kind of painting here, it's down and dirty. At the start, it's just like any kind of a, say a 2D painting where all you're trying to do is find the lights and darks as rapidly as you can. Now into this, I've got some Reaper clear purple. We're going to start to get that into the mix here. And we'll just let those go together. Essentially, the contrast paints, to me, they are like the clear paints. Uh, given a choice of the two, I'm probably always going to go with the clears. Because, well, they cost half as much. They last a whole lot longer. They tend not to leave the watermarks. There's kind of a lot of things that they do a whole lot better than the contrast paints. Now, I, if you want to call it a downside or a difference, that's how I like to think of it. They only have, well, there's been a few new ones added, but you're looking at maybe eight or nine clears versus, say, 30 whatever <laughs> of the contrast paints. Maybe let's give her some kind of reddish hair. So this is the Wildwood mixed with some of the Pro Acryl, even taking a little bit of the green stuff world. And we'll just give her some. You can see what the theme is here. A lot of red. And you can see we are not worrying about much else except covering up that primer as fast as we can. I think she actually has a little bit of flower in her hair, so maybe that's uh, we can do that yellow in the same way as the flowers that I've got kind of set aside here. Got a couple different types. I'll be choosing which one. This is Green Stuff World here. That's Warlord over here. Also, lately I've been doing some tutorials where I just make my own grass and flower tufts. Those are also, again, available on the Patreon page. So what we're going to do now is just grab, oh, a little bit of the, that's the Green Stuff World intensity ink there and just pop it right along that's all I needed get that covered now let's start to have some more fun this is from secret weapon miniatures right here this is a pale green verdigree and we're just gonna get right into our stones here and you're gonna see a lot of wet into wet action that's sort of the point of these early, early layers here. Not going to be worried about, oh, did I, did I get the face just the right tone? Well, no, we're not even going to be messing around with the face for a while yet. Not even going to be messing around with that. Now, if we wanted, you know, so let's say we wanted this to all be dry, I could find another thing to work on, say something like the butterflies. But for the time being right now, I'm just going to see what I can find here. Some other colors here. Let's get some of this yellow. Mix that with the wildwood. I guess what I try to show people is just don't be afraid to have at it. You don't have to be super delicate. Here, let's just gonna mark that little flower right there. So I'm gonna start to put some different colors down into this. And the nice thing is I've got that wild wood there that serves as a nice little base and all the other colors that I add into this, well they start to mix with that. Make some different tones. 
but it does take a little bit of if you've never really painted in this way if you're the sort that does the the black primer and does layer after layer of lighter and lighter which that's kind of what we did when we started out too well this will be a little different for you it tends to look extremely chaotic in the early stages and then all of a sudden as you get towards the end people say oh, well, wait a second that looks like something whereas for the longest time it just oh, it doesn't really look like anything to the degree that we usually don't do work in progress images because well they sort of look like this and then people get awful, they're like, well, wait a minute, that's not what I wanted. It's not supposed to be that dark, or it's not supposed to be that light, you know, one or the other. And he says, this is just patience. <laughs> Those are, that's not even a base coat. Right now, what I've got here is not even a base coat. At least that's not what I consider to be a base coat. I've got some other things, i got some some magenta here can even start to think about some of the other colors that are going to be involved in this here let's grab a little bit of that's just it's maggot white it's an off white that is more towards the blue all right now we've got color here that's a little bit lighter purple but with that darker purple established now as i add these in I have a dark that is not black and I can even change I, I like to just say that it's the color temperature by adding more of this blue to the purple it's cooler than say if I added some of that light flesh tone over there there's some other differences you're going to see that this is why I, I selected some of the different paints from different companies they do different things so the reaper paints especially the clears and the liners I love those because they are more translucent or just not quite so opaque and I can do stuff like this where I can let what's underneath show through now let's say you want a little more opacity and there are definitely reasons why and I've got plenty of videos that have the pro acryls and those are handy because, well, I don't want to say they blot out the sun, but they really do. Uh, they cover like crazy. So if you need more coverage, you use those. Sometimes I'll use the contrast paints to sort of thin those down and make them less opaque, but not watery. There's, there's one thing about thinning your paint but there's also the well you have thinner paint but it's not super watery so see we're already starting to determine okay maybe this is a little bit lighter here it's more of an overcoat we've got these interior sleeves here maybe these are lighter the cuffs here maybe those are going to be more of a darker purple maybe they're not even purple maybe they're more of a blue And you notice I'm still working with the larger craft brushes. Let's do that thing what we were talking about. Just kind of shifting the color a little bit. So that's more of a cooler color. Well, now it's going to be more of a warm color. Especially with a touch of that clear magenta in there. Let's get back to some of our purple here. By the way, the, the palette is that same homemade Chinese food container palette it is just a Chinese food container with a chamois sponge it's a chopped up chamois, chamois sponge and a little bit of parchment paper added and some water and that's all it takes and the let's see I think it was probably chicken on my ding so that was tasty See, it's still wet down in those crevices, so I can take those and do some wet blending with it. 
just happens to be there. I can even start to maybe build up a few skin tones here. And typically, skin tones, what are they? A yellow, a red, and some kind of off-white. Because we used to get the skin tones, right? We're constantly searching for just the right skin tone. And they were, they were too light, too dark, too intense, not intense enough. And then I realized, wait a second, you were a portrait painter for a long time. You didn't buy skin color, you made skin color. And that's what we're doing right now. Just making our own skin color here. That we can build from. And we need it lighter. Let's just make it a little bit lighter. Just going to work this to a certain point. Then, just like everything else, move on to another location. Let's not get trapped in one location for too long. Now, the, sometimes the hands, you can never tell if they're wearing gloves or not. We're going to say no gloves here. The gloves have come off. Let's go to the hair. Let's make that a bit on the more on the lighter side here. Because we have some, some decent darks infused into there start to figure out some lighter tones all the while not being afraid to just let things mix because there is plenty of that original glaze slash wash down in the crevices always did like the the hair as well on the Werner clock sculpts it was always kind of interesting. There was some flow to it. You could seem to do a lot with it. It wasn't just a hair helmet. Because sometimes you get that where it is literally just a kind of a blob of green stuff on top of their head. Hey, George, how's it going? Uh, well, it's got to be uh, dinner-ish time out there for you. It has to be in the 640-something range, I would think. Possibly only 540. Oh, possibly. Yeah, possibly only 540. Let's work a little more of our yellow in there. Now, I don't want it to get too close to the skin tone, actually. But why am I doing this color here? Well, there's always that first chapter in the book of Wapple it's if a color goes somewhere it must go everywhere and that's that's the goal here is to try and make sure that maybe the orange of the butterflies finds its way in other spots now I'm gonna make sure I've got my focus going here there we are and then I'll also make sure that I've got the brightness and I'm gonna set the brightness a little lighter There we are. Now there's plenty of leather that's happening there too. So we're going to have to... That's where I'm probably going to take, say, the contrast wildwood. Mix that maybe with the yellow or with some of the green. So you can see how I like to build off of just that... Okay, that one color, that, that wild wood. If I use different colors to lighten it, we get very different results. But by sticking with that one color, we get that, I like to call it color unity. Right here. Do a little more. Now this can't get too light because, well, the flower's not going to be able to do much. Now let's get ourselves a little bit of yellow 
here speaking of the flower let's just make sure since we're gonna have yellow flowers let's just do that straight away so we don't forget now we've got that again that's the contrast wildwood there let's mix it with some green again and let's put that into some of our leathers here maybe even on the staff on the ground here <clears throat> sorry I'm not gonna do too much there <clears throat> now that that's a little bit drier I'm gonna add some more of my lighter green to it all right it's been a long day of making videos very long day <clears throat> actually I just posted the latest Patreon video it was another one of those big old Mad Max style vehicles, basically a giant bus. Yeah, let's get this a little lighter. <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. Might take a drink of water here in a second. And see how that gets lighter much faster. That is the actually that's the Pro Acryl yellow. That's why that shows up so much. If that was the clear yellow, we wouldn't get that same type of coverage. Which again, it's not good or bad. It's just it's a different type of paint. It serves a different purpose. So I'm just trying to make some of these things a slightly different color here than the purple and see which direction I want to go. That to me looked like a bit, a little bit like a scroll of some kind. Let's go a little bit of reddishness on the leather boots here real quick. So all of this, like I said before, is really just a base coat. That's all it's meant to be. Oh, hey, Kamitrion, how's it going? Yeah, I think, uh, what was the, well, the last one was the, I call it the floaty skaven. I don't even know if I've got that one in here. I've got some other ones of that I was I was hoping to do. And at some point it looks like Saturday my new Army of the Dead figures from from GW are supposed to get here. That's the the new King and Heralds set, I believe it is. So I'm really looking forward to that. We got some more pouches back here. Man, we've got ourselves some runes on there. Like I said, still just sort of working our way through this. I'm even going to add some of the hair color down here on the ground, on the little branch here. And I'm going to shift back to the green. Get that a little lighter. Now it's not really essential to do a whole bunch of painting on here because between the flock and the flowers and everything else there's going to be a lot of coverage on this on the rocks here so as I preach in a lot of the army painting videos don't fret about painting a base it's going to be just mostly covered with foliage at a certain stage so and start to bring out some of those runes there. Just trying to figure out what everything is here. Now I can go back into our purple here. We can lighten that up a touch here. Let's give it a little hint of the magenta again. And that does a couple things it's not just making it lighter it's also increasing the the saturation of it it's a little less blue but since we are want to have a sort of a magenta glow here on the end of the staff well we need to have magenta in a few other places this is going to be a relatively 
gentle object source lighting also. It's not going to be quite as intense as some of the other stuff that I've done on other figures. And I forget if this is one of the oh the Reapercon figures from those different factions that they create you know, Dusk Wardens and Maggot Crown and whatever those were. I'm I'm out in the hall doing demos all day, so I don't really don't really see too much of that stuff. Now got a little bit of blue candy ink here. I'll just throw some of that in that's gonna make it a little more bluish. I'm gonna go back onto the robe here real quick, especially in some of the darker areas. Because the shyish purple, that's definitely more of a on the warmer side of things. Let's find ourselves something a little bit lighter here. So we'll take the yeah, the maggot white, mix that in there, lighten it up a touch. Because I try to have the folds not just be darker, but also if the, I don't want to call them highlights, but if the lighter colors on the garments, whatever they are, cloaks, if those tend to be more of a warm thing, well, I actually kind of like to have a cooler color in the shadow areas, or vice versa. Just lighten that up a, a touch. Now I'll get this part of the cloak out here, or whatever it is. Now do we stick with the this green theme out here on the cuffs? Maybe. Maybe not. I don't want to see how that looks. We've got obviously some buttons here. I always enjoy the, the green and purple combinations anyway. It also kind of helps to set off the hair a bit. Maybe we'll find some things to be more on the gold side here too. We got some buckles there we have to deal with. Again, some different pouches here. Just trying to see what is what. Now we've got our Green Stuff World Intensity ink that we can throw over the top of that, knock it down again. Can even throw some of that on the hair here. Like I can even use some of the contrast paint to darken things down as a little bit of a glaze. Gonna go back into some shadows and then we can can always take a can always go with the smaller brush and start to put in a few more things. Oh philodews. Oh hey there, I'm uh, welcome in. Glad it's your first visit. There's plenty of other live sessions like this. Uh well I go is say you can do the subscribe and why is that the there's like the bell you have to click on the bell for all notifications which I'm learning I gotta do myself because I'm always wondering why in the world am I not getting alerts for new videos that the person I've subscribed to and it's because I didn't click the all notifications didn't realize that I don't know that is something that YouTube changed a while back use this many for any that now this one here, oh, it would certainly be probably for, well, uh, somebody's D&D &D game. What I would probably do is use it as, I know for Wild West Exodus, we used to paint figures because civilians were part of the game. They could move around and do stuff. So we had civilian figures 
I, I suppose uh, maybe what Frostgrave or something that seems to be a game that a lot of people like yeah, let's get a little more magenta into that for me the the games that I'm gonna be most likely to play are well bolt action that's for sure but sometimes I just have the these figures around and every so often sometimes well heck some of the first Reaper figures that ever painted were for a, a friend's there's a big D and D kind of the end of adventure fight or whatever. And oh it actually sculpted a Gothias tree. That's something else I'm hoping to add here too is is some more sculpting stuff. I never get to sculpt anymore. So hopefully that happens. Uh, let's see, not a fan of the Well the they're really different when you're used to other stuff because I got used to the well let's say the bolt action song of ice and fire and then I've just and the Lord of the Rings figures which for all intents and purposes they're not GW figures because they're sculpted in true scale so they're it's almost like I haven't really painted a GW figure in years which is kind of wild when I think about it uh, what I'm interested in, well, there's the the new Blood Bowl team because, and it's the Lizard Men. That was my first Blood Bowl team, and then they're doing the Osiarchs, I believe, the the Bone Reaper guys. Well, that's essentially them giving me back my Tomb Kings. So that's it's very specific, I guess I would say, because basically stuff that was kind of taken away from me years ago is now kind of coming back and I'm looking forward to doing some of the really nifty lighting effects with them painting some demon marble maybe let's see what I'll do is I'll grab some of the contrast Wildwood here. I like to just kind of slap in the eyes and then do the dark around those like that. Hope you can see that throughout the camera shakes. And then let's go a little bit lighter here. Let's take some of this purple like so. And then we're going to go, i get this a little closer for you so you can see it. And then, see under there, it sort of self-paints the eyebrow in there instead of you having to work so hard to paint it in. And as, as this gets lighter, you can see the eyebrow starts to emerge. But you didn't have to work so hard to get that little detail in there. I'm going to make sure the palette's sitting where it's supposed to be. And let's get the eye a little bit lighter in there. Let's grab ourselves some blue liner. Here we go another reaper color that I really like yeah the GW figures the way they are sculpted is uh, it, it's distinct yeah just like a Werner clock sculpt is distinct but it I've gotten so used to well true scale stuff or if it's not true scale it's still basically a human with a gun now which way do we want this thing to be looking I think it's got to be looking off to my left. Just get an eye right there. See if we can work in the other one. So now she's kind of looking off to the to the left there. Now we can do the the monarch butterflies, or I don't know, maybe she's a little bit more of a 
darker character and maybe we do some kind of a different color butterfly. And I didn't really have a chance to do some research on different butterflies before I started this up. It's been kind of a long busy day. A very long very busy day. Now let's get a little more light on that collar there. Yeah, not quite sure what some of this is. Almost like it's partial rags in a way, uh, to, for lack of a better term. We've got this little mini amphora here. I'm going to give that a little bit of a lighter, more of a metal type touch there. See what we can do with some of these runes on the back. Basically, the vast majority of the miniatures that I paint, well, they're either for me to play games with or for somebody else. So, something like this, I either have it as... I don't want to use the word prop as, as in a negative way, but it's kind of like a... When I have a classes or whatever, I'll use this to show, well, the, the foliage, the little butterflies and such. I always like to have examples around. Because as much as I like to carry my armies around and use examples from those, sometimes these little specialty figures like, like this can make really good examples in a painting class. Which, oh yeah, speaking of which, I've got some basing classes coming up just a few weeks from now at Dragonfall. That's here in the Chicago area. You can bet we'll be doing the Bark and Branch. I've got, I'll be doing some of the Green Stuff World roller type bases. Be showing some of the different foliages and I don't know if I'll, I doubt I'll have the time to show people how to make their own grass tufts. But actually this little thing right here those are my own homemade grass tufts. And I did a, oh geez, a few dozen sheets of those so far in a couple of different videos. I loved making my own tufts. Uh, it, yes, you can buy them. There's plenty of companies that make them and they're fantastic. But sometimes I just, I need them right away. I don't have time to order them and wait for them or hope that they have exactly the right color that I need. Now let's go a little brighter here with our magenta on this. So this is definitely less of a glow than I normally have on something like this. I wanted it to be a little less about the object source lighting and a little bit more about the other stuff. Now let's go back to our skin tone. We need to I'm gonna try and find a way to get a little bit of greenishness in there. And yeah, it's not just on the male figures where you're gonna to wanna to get some kind of not so pink color in your skin. But you also wanna get a little bit of the reddishness, and that's what we're gonna add now. Oh, some here. There we go. It's a little bit more of a pink. Kind of indicates some of the capillaries here and blood vessels in that part of the body. This one here, it's really more just the knuckles that are showing. We can now start to go back into the face. We start to organize some things, lighten some things, clean up some things. But since I have the whole rest of the figure, like the hair and, and everything else around it that's got some color on it, we established the context of this. You know, the, the face is in the context of the rest of the miniature. 
Whereas, say that was just white primer. Well, everything looks dark next to white, and vice versa with black. Because that's what we used to do. We used to prime everything black, and a whole bunch of many, many, many layers later, you finally had something that had some shading, which, I mean, even if the shading all worked out the way you hoped, still, it looked kind of flat because you didn't have any variety in your darks. So you just, now we can start to add some lighter tones to the knuckles. And remember what I said, that face just kind of happened. It was like, oh my gosh, what is that? And boom, there was a face all of a sudden with expression. I try to... And every single episode that I do, I try to preach that idea of work the whole miniature at once, not just a little tiny part of it. Work all of it at the same time. It's actually easier to... It's not easier just to do more, but even that single figure, it's you're less likely to get bored with it instead of just working on one area and let's say you get frustrated with it because well, geez that never happens that never happens to anybody nobody ever gets frustrated working on one part of a miniature that just doesn't seem to be working out the way they want it to let's start to work in some grayish wood tones here because I know the the first color everybody reaches for, it's, oh, I got wood, where's my brown? Well, you're almost better off taking some red and some green and mix them together and make your own brown because when you mix a lighter color with that, you're going to end up with something that's maybe a little more green, a little more towards the red, and wood is surprisingly not, well, as brown as people think. So it's interesting. You know, this is probably just like a little bit of a rag here. It's almost like she just, there's like a part of a coat here. Which I think kind of makes sense. But, you know, we'll just go this way with it. Now we got some of that shyish purple here. I'm going to take some of that intensity ink. And the glazes aren't just for the opening phases. They can be for this part too. So... We built that up a little bit, and then we're going to knock it down just a touch. Like so. Maybe even some of these cuffs, we knock them down. Maybe, let's see if we can't find a darker color for the hair here. So that's going to be some of the contrast wildwood. If I have some regular paint in there, well, the nice thing is that I can thin it down with water because I still don't have any contrast medium. And after all this time, that really the main reason I use the contrast paints is just to give people alternatives for those who can't necessarily get the Reaper liners and clears. That was the whole genesis behind getting the contrast paints in the first place. Because like I said, usually not my first choice. So here, let's darken this down even a little bit more. Going to just grab a little bit of water here. It's the other nice thing about the Werner clock sculpted hair is that it's got some pretty solid texture to it. It's sculpted in there pretty deep. Let's try and Get a little gold here on the sword hilt. Is it? Yeah, it does show up a little bit on the other side. I'm just going to assume that this is supposed to be metal down here. I see we got some more of the runes over there. This is the other thing 
about this sort of shaded base coat approach, if you want to call it that. It's easier to make rapid adjustments on it because you're not trapped, you're not locked into one. Like, okay, oh geez, you know, I, I have to go this route of green, or this has to be gold. Like, no, what if it, what if it's not gold? What if it's not even metal? I can change it really quickly. And what, what did I lose? Just a few minutes of the original paint I threw on there, and then a little bit more just to cover it up. Not a big deal. Now, it's still, yeah, it looks like there's, that's still just wood grain there. I'm just trying to figure out what some of these things are. Is this sort of more of a, some kind of a metal thing that's been put on this? Like I said, I can just sort of find my way through this. Here, let's make ourselves... I use the, speaking of green and red, that's basically a burgundy with a green. And then I'm going to use that for some of these straps here. Maybe even get a little bit on our staff. Maybe even redefine some of the fingers there. Now, if I really want to liven up that staff. Here's a little bit of the, here, you know, let's just, I don't want to get too much of this out here. There's not a whole lot left in the container. This is actually the Vallejo fluorescent paint here. I'll just get a little bit of that. Now it's very thick, but it really doesn't cover well. But what it does do is it's really intense. And I mean really intense. The camera really does not capture it at all. I've tried every which way to try and get it to do that, but it really doesn't. Here, let's get a little bit of our... And I've tried every other type, but I have to say, and, and even other Vallejo fluorescents, aside from just the regular standard fluorescent and the original still stands after all these years we're talking seven ish years of fluorescent paints or more nothing has unseated this I've tried them all pretty much and they just they don't either they don't have the intensity or the ease of use or whatever it is. All right, let's just. There's actually still some, believe it or not, wet original wash down in here. Now, the other reason I like the Reaper Clears is that they go well with stuff like the fluorescents because they are not super opaque and they're also. Pretty darn high pigment. A good thing to have. Here, let's just spread that around. And then maybe we'll spread that a little bit down on the ground. Not going to do too much down here because, well, we still have our flowers to put there yet. I mean, who knows? We could even do a little bit of that glow onto the butterflies. As you can see, I'm trying to maybe splash a little bit of this. Some areas on the figure here. You can lighten this up. Maybe back in here. Have to remember my fluorescent paint though. Map, you never quite know 
what I'll be painting on one of these. Sometimes even I don't know. It just sometimes at the very last minute, I'll go, okay, I have to switch to this. In fact, the pretty much most of the last several sessions have all been things that I originally did not plan on painting. Now, let's see if we can't get a few. Now, let's not make that too yellow. I try and get some highlights on the hair here. And I apologize if sometimes I turn things and they're not in camera view. Because there's times where I just have to hold it a certain way. You know, let's get some. Pick out a few lighter colors on the top of the head here. Like so. And then it starts to become a matter of refinements. How much time do you want to spend on a figure? You could spend hours on it. What are you doing? You just add more refinements to it. That's all. It's just a matter of, well, let's add a little, you know, let, let's add some green in this dark here. Let's maybe do a little more development of the shading on this. Let's blend this a little more. Let's make more of a transition out of this. Let's add some freehand there, some object source lighting here. But that, those that know me and have seen me doing these before, they know I like to have stuff like the freehand, the object source lighting, start to bl at least block that in as early in the process as possible because you're less you're gonna be less intimidated because I've seen people they have all these grand plans to do freehand or object source lighting or whatever and they've been painting 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 and they say well I don't want to ruin it now with freehand so they don't do anything or they they won't do the object source lighting or whatever and it's it's kind of a bummer and I thought well if Again, if you adjust, if you start out with it, you're less likely to be afraid to do it. And then if, let's say, you can tell sort of right away, say, ah, you know what, that's really not going to work the way I wanted it to. And then you can just paint it out of there. It's, it's gone. You don't have to worry about it anymore. And remember, we have not really added anything that's white to this. I, I don't have white out on the palette. I have some off-whites. But there is no pure white on the palette, and I don't really think there's going to be. Now, maybe if I'm doing my non-metallic, that, that the high contrast sort of chrome, maybe I'll have some white out on the palette for a few different things to get that little bit of extra pizzazz, but that's that's for a purpose. That's not just white for the sake of having white on the palette. Now on the other side of this here, let's get that finger there. Let's lighten up some of our flower here. Because some of the flowers are pretty darn light that are in our foliage. And I'm going to have to add those if I'm going to want to add the butterflies. But I'm just wondering, do I do monarch butterflies? Or do I do just try to do some kind of crazy glowing fantasy butterflies? And now that I'm thinking about it, maybe that could be fun because I already did the monarch butterflies that that's been done already and by butterflies for those that didn't see here, let me grab this so you can see that little butterfly right there and see another one right there those are the kind of things that 
I was thinking about adding to our apparently some form of elf sorcerer. So now we're going to go back the other way here. Darken some things down. A little bit of a glaze. Hey, Gary, how's it going? Uh, officially the first Gary. There, there might be, well, well, maybe there'll be more. But you are... A-list Gary in the house. Uh, I wish I could do these basically every day. Uh, unfortunately, the one of the projects that I'm working on, I just can't. It's not something I can do on a YouTube Live. It has to kind of be on the hush-hush. And that's really been occupying a lot of the time lately, so I'm hoping... Eh, by the end of the week to just kind of get that one out of the way. Well, I kind of have to because Saturday is when my new Lord of the Rings figures are supposed to show up. And those are going to be painted more like... Uh, let me grab some of my... going to be done in this sort of style with the the corrosion and the glowing effects. Let's get some, let's go back to some lighter, no, actually what I'm going to do is a little bit of purple here in the magenta, and I'm actually going to tone this down just a bit, here on, on the outer edges of the, the glow there. And over there, again, it's another another weapon there. We got pants here. So let's let's look at these guys right here. I'm gonna take them out of the bag. It's gonna make it a whole lot easier for you guys to see them. Here, give me a second. I'm just going to grab my scissors here and cut them out of the bag. be easier. Again, these are from Wicked Elf. And this is Vellum here. So let's see. what These are the ones that I use as the Monarchs. I think it was these two guys here. Let's see what happens. Let's just paint a couple of these and see what we get. There. Now it's going to, ironically enough, the magenta paint's going to look darker here. And we did that test. We found out it's definitely better to paint these on here and then take them off. Now you still have to paint the other side. I'm just going to paint a few of these here. And let's see what happens then as we try to give these things a little bit of light. Almost like these are some kind of, see right there? It's some kind of a spell. Oh, well, not a familiar but some kind of summon that they're dire butterflies. Oh my goodness! There we go. <laughs> That's that. That is. Uh, yep, dire butterflies. I speaking of D and D, pretty sure that that's not in the monster manual. Just throwing that out there. So this could be kind of fun, actually. Here, let's get a little bit of that. Lighter color here for the bodies. These are really, they're very small, so it's tough. Yeah, that could be very interesting. Well, let's, let's see what happens when we get the outer edge a little bit darker. Maybe a little bit of purple in there. Here. 
it gets a little bit shiny. And then basically what you do is you have to kind of rip these things off of here gently, of course. And then I'll usually I kind of put them on a another one of my little dead paint jars with some blue tack and try to paint the other side. So some glowing butterflies here. That is well this is certainly going to be different. This is not at all what I was expecting to do when I first started this and that's kind of the whole point of these is to try brand new stuff. So again these are from from Wicked Elf here. Now maybe you know, we might have one or two on the end of this, but I definitely want to have some here. So we need ourselves some foliage there. I'm just going to finish off some of this here first, though. Going to add some lights to the pants, to the boots. Because once those plants are in the way, they're going to be kind of in the way. Let's get ourselves a few more lights over here. I thought about making this more of a transparent thing here. But, I mean, we got glowing butterflies. How much do we want to screw around with this other stuff? I'm just going to get some, this is some straight up clear purple here. Let's get some more highlights into our dress here. If we can find some. Maybe go one step further with that. Because remember, we also want to put leaves on that tree. There's a lot of things we have to do on this yet that involve so much more than just the actual figure itself. We're even going to get some of that purple here on the face. As always, color goes somewhere, has to go everywhere. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get this brush out of the way here. And now I've got to I'm going to get rid of this glove. And we've got some flowers here that we're going to work with. And some of this. So this is from Green Stuff World here. And it's this really tall foliage. So I'm going to break out some of this too. Nice big old batch of it. And I'm going to, I think, start off with some of the Green Stuff World foliage here. And what I need to do is anchor those tall foliage into something. So, so I'm thinking a flower tuft here. Gonna glue that in place. Then I like to have where's my pins? Well pins like this. So I'm gonna take my tuft, get some glue on that. And not just tamp it down, but spread it out also. So that, that's spread out now. Maybe throw one over here, a smaller one. There's a smaller one. Get 
again with our pin here and in you go Again, we'll spread this out do I want one on the back eh if that is it's going to be even smaller so I'm going to take my scissors and cut one down and we will maybe throw that back here and then get that in place so I like to work in these little triangles and the triangle has a different shape to it so bigger smaller smallest like to do that heck I could even take some of these little flowers here and throw them on the tree branch but Remember, we wanted to get some leaves on that tree branch. Let's see if I've got... Ah, here we are. So here we've got a collection of some cut leaves. And I did those with these guys here, also from Green Stuff World. There we go. There is a whole bunch of these. Tons of them. Now I'm going to get my palette out of the way here, briefly because things can get messy. We got ourselves a leaf. Now I, I suggest when you grab a leaf you do this sooner rather than later. I've actually got myself a bigger container here to catch some of the overflow. So we're just gonna right there. And you can see we've got some leaves punched out of it. And you just move around the leaf. Here, let's get some over here. Now, sometimes, the, again, if you do this sooner rather than later, the leaf doesn't dry out so much. But you definitely want to press it as soon as you can. You want to press it in some kind of a heavy book or whatever. Here, let's do some more here. Sometimes you just pull that away and it's easier to get to it. So we've got a whole bunch of leaves in here now. now let's get some more of these guys into our little container there. And then we're going to use, this is from MIG Ammo. I really like this stuff. It's sand and gravel glue. Here we are. Really love this stuff. Oh, hey there. Evil Elvis, he's back. We're going to do a couple of things. So we've got ourselves a little bit of green flock here. We've got our green leaves. And I'm just going to pry this thing open. And I always like to have another container for it here. There's... So I'm just going to pour some in here. Get my cap back on this thing so I don't tip it over or do something stupid like that. And as the same stuff I used to glue down all of these leaves on this one, not going to use it on our butterflies, but we are going to use it on some of our flock and foliage here. So I'm going to Get a brush ready for that. Here we go. Get some glue here. Now it starts out, it is going to be more. Let's get a few leaves on the ground here. It's going to be shiny, but it doesn't dry shiny. So we've got some leaves there. over here. So let's use a little different brush. There. And take some of our flock here. Throw that down too. 
Now you know I wasn't really fretting about painting the the rocks completely. All right, let's get a little more of that glue here. Again, that's the sand and gravel glue. Now we're going to take our flock here, drizzle that in. <laughs> Starts to fill in a lot of these edges. And here, sometimes at the base of your your tufts, they don't always perfectly match up to the base. So I'll just get a little bit of that to cover there. <laughs> Starts to look like it's actually part of the flowers. All right. Now we wanted leaves that also went on to the end of these branches here. Ah, oh, sne sneaky using leaf. Well, what's that for? Oh, yeah. Nothing replicates nature better than nature. And we're kind of doing that here. We're replicating nature with nature because who'd have thought real leaves make good leaves on trees? Uh, I actually, I had to learn the hard way that, well, yeah, instead of trying to sculpt those or get the brass etched foliage or whatever, uh, why not just try using actual leaves? Because, again, who'd have thought, surprise, surprise, those darn leaves look like leaves. Pesky, pesky realistic leaves looking all realistic. What's, what's going on with that? Now, it can sometimes take a little bit of maneuvering to make it happen, like that. Let's get another leaf out on the end here somewhere. And sometimes they, they end up sticking to the to the brush and it takes a few attempts to get them to stick to where they're supposed to go, but well that's yeah, you know, that's how it can go sometimes. Here let's separate out some leaves here. Ah, there's a good one. Right there. Yeah, look at that. See how it just gives it some extra life? Uh, oh, I've got another branch out here. And it's it's surprisingly strong and resilient, I have to say that. Actually, I had two leaves there. Going to get some more glue down. Here's another leaf. And like I said, sometimes you have to really play with it. But that sand and gravel glue, that's pretty strong stuff. Mm, there. I can add as many of these or as few of these as required. And there's all kind. Of, there's oak leaves. There's tons of different leaves. If there's time later, maybe I'll, I'll drag out a few of the other leaves that I've got. And I'm gonna just throw out some more here. I'm just trying to get a couple more leaves onto this. Where are you at? Oh, there you are. Let's see if I can get one on the opposite side of the tree here. I said sometimes they don't all go exactly where you want them to. I'm going to work with... Uh, that one's a little bit on the big side. Yeah, here's a smaller one. This is more of a Maple leaf sized. Yeah, sometimes you got to play. Ah, there we go. That is what I was hoping for. I wanted to have basically two. 
emerging from one spot like that that's good sometimes I'll even dab a little extra glue in there and if you need to drop some paint onto these you can always do that too I'm gonna turn this over and I know some people have asked well what about using paper leaves so I tried that oh hey Frankie Oh, it's from Germany. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And, and thanks for stopping in. I know it's, well, let's see, it's, I don't think it's that early of a breakfast time there. What is it, about 10.41 there, maybe? Or is it 9.41? It's the guest of time, guest of time zone game. I'm just going to throw a few more green leaves in there. So that's pretty fun. You know what? I'm thinking of going back to a little bit of my this right here. There's just a area there back into yeah, that integrates that flower a little bit better. Okay, I'm going to cover this up before I knock it over. Now we do have this taller foliage here. And I, we may or may not use it, but you can see how tall that is. There's a bunch of different types. Now it's 1041 there. Okay, that's, uh, I thought it was, uh, usually six, seven hours ahead. So this is another, again, a tall foliage. You can see how tall those guys are. There's about four different colors. Now I'll show you just how tall we're talking about. So, I mean, this is it's overhead now do we want this to be almost like a tree that might be a little bit too much and we already have a tree behind her so what I have done is taken my scissors wherever that is and done something like this chop that out spread these around like so and then maybe stuck them in with the flowers let's see do we want this maybe right there so maybe somewhere in there we want that to be glued in or maybe that's just too much maybe we want that to be more open I'm going to actually take some of this away here. But now that's going to require some heavier glue. Which way do we want to go? No, actually, yeah, I want this element to stand out some more. So I don't think we're going to do quite as much of that tall foliage there. Maybe we'll make it, because I can make it shorter, that's for sure. I think that's more like it. Let's just go shorter with it. So I'm going to get some glue here. We'll place our foliage there. And then remember, I can take leaves or I can take my flock here. Basically, it covers up, it does a couple of things. It covers up that edge, but also gives it a little more stability right there. Can you make it into an archway secret garden style? Actually, that's, oh, there's uh, th some paper, not paper, vellum foliage, again, that uh, Wicked Elf makes. It's like a vine, some ivy. I want to do a vignette like that. Okay, let's go. We got our butterflies over here, our potentially glowing butterflies. Let's get a few of those. Here, I'm going to grab myself one of my little things with some blue tack on it here and let's start to remove some of these so you basically you do something like this you kind of bend the vellum a little bit and I usually have something like an exacto blade here I'm not gonna cut that out I'm just gonna try and lift it out 
I did learn with the other types of foliage that it is better to take them off first and then paint them. So there's our first butterfly there. We've gotten that off of the, the vellum here. And I'm going to stick that onto my, like so. Let's get these little guys off of here too. Where's, ah, there it is. I haven't uh, ripped any of the butterflies yet. The foliage is a little more dainty than these guys. There we go. He's about ready to come off. And there's another way, too. You, know, you can actually just sort of go like so. And then you can actually rough these up a little bit more. See, I can crease the paper a little bit. Punch these out. Don't want to lose them. There he is. These are tiny little buggers here, to say the least. Even with the tweezers, he's really hard to grab. There we go. Come on. And let's get him flipped over here. Now he's ready for painting. Let's get our third one. There you are. That's better. Get him stuck to it. And number four. Okay, that one, we weren't able to save that one, but I'm going to grab a, like that. I'm going to bring the palette back out here and paint a couple of more. Where's my palette? Here it is. On the interior. For the bodies. Boy, they look bright just on this. Get a little bit of our. Yeah, it's not. It does not have too abrupt of a transition too quickly here. There. Okay. While that dries, let's work on the outer edge here. Just makes that inner glow sort of stand out a bit more. And I know it looks kind of weird for people that have just joined this here, but these are, again, the vellum butterflies from Wicked Elf. I'll, I'll toss a, a link in the description once, once YouTube lets me. YouTube is kind of funky that way. You actually have to wait a few hours before you can add anything to a video where are we at here there let's get this even lighter try and really make this glow all of our little butterflies here gotta make the center part of the body as light as I can light as I can. Now, once these get folded, you it's weird. Sometimes you can see a lot of the little detail, and then sometimes you just sort of lose a little bit of it. Okay. So, butterflies. Now, Let's see, where can we put some of these guys?
Yeah, well, we're not going to lose them. But let's start with some of the bigger ones here now. Is this one that I need to paint on the other side, too? Yeah, I'm going to paint that one on the other side. So i got to get him off of my blue tack here. Turn him over, paint the other side. Like you do, real quick. Couple of brighter spots in there. Fade that a bit. Darken the edge. There we go. Right around that edge. So he's pretty much ready. Let's see about this, the one next to him here. Now this one, the other side's already painted. So he's actually ready to go. And now we we can fold these as much or as little as we want. Now let's get him in the tweezers there so you see him there. Uh, Synthwave color combos seem to be in style again. Oh, I've been experimenting with blue highlighted with yellow inspired by some artwork in an old heavy metal magazine. Uh, where, where do you want to put this? On our hand here. Yeah, let's put one on our hand just so one shows up. Just going to get a little bit of my glue out here and... Put just a dot of that. Let's not lose our butterfly. Might want to get a little more bend to that. Where is she? There she is. Let's make sure that our butterfly sits where we want it to. So there we go. There's our, our glowing butterfly now. That's sitting right on her hand here. He's like, don't mess with me. I got butterflies. I have glowy butterflies. I'm going to get you. Now, get this one separated from our little painting thing. Give that a fold. And maybe we'll put one on the end of the staff here. Like so. Get this on our tweezers. In place. So there we go. There's another, another butterfly right there. And actually, I'm, I'm liking the glowing butterflies, so I'm, I'm glad I did that. Like I said, it was just something that I kind of thought of at the last second. All right, what about this one? Do we need to paint the other side? Nope. But I am going to give it a fold here. Makes it a little easier to just pick up here. There. Now let's get one maybe over here on our flowers. Basically I have to find a flower that's stable and actually stuck to the surface. There we go. So now we've got ourselves another glowing butterfly over here in our flowers. We can put one here maybe. Let's 
let's take one of these off and let's make sure that it's painted on both sides. Okay, that one I still have to paint. I think this one already has paint on it. So I am going to give that a bit of a fold. Pull it out. And I'm going to get myself some glue on the end of right there. Grab my butterfly. And that is why I wanted me some green foliage because look at how that stands out there against the, the dark green. There's a lot of elements added to your base. How long has it taken to this point? Oh, geez, when did we start this? 2.20, to about 2.30. So it's been an hour and a half or so, and this was just primer. <laughs> there was certainly no foliage added. That is the, it's the miracle of the shaded base coat. Now we've got one more here that I've got to paint. Yeah, none of these butterflies were painted either. <laughs> we've been painting these on the fly pun intended so there's our magenta that's the fluorescent magenta let's paint in a little bit of just something in the interior here remember we were doing the dark stuff around the edges A little bit of the darker color around the edges there. And we got to go back into the lighter body here in the center. There it is. A couple of these lighter sort of sparkles on the outside. Take the knife, give it a bend, pull it off of this here. He's ready to go. And then, where should we put this? I've got a dot of glue. I think we maybe need another one out here. Our tweezers. And there's another butterfly right there. See him sitting there? Oh, hey, Mandalore. How's it going? Oh, and runs with Caesars. Um, love your stuff. You're amazing. Where can I purchase your painting pyramid series? Actually, you can get it directly on Patreon. Because when you, when you do the, well, let's go with the $15 Army Painter Pledge that's scrolling across the screen right now. That officially now it's more like 220 hours worth of videos because it's everything including the most recent one of the dark sword range which was this so i do a whole painting dark sword range yeah this is well more like yeah about an hour 45 minutes maybe and we've gotten this far with it like i said you can always add more you know, more refinements, whatever. We did these leaves here. Did all kinds of fun stuff. Maybe let's paint a few more butterflies here because I just, I'm kind of liking these and I think I want to add a few more. But yeah, I will send you a m email to your Patreon email address. I'm going to do some bigger ones here because we've got plenty of small ones. I'm going to do a bigger one here. Ah, there we go. So again, starting out with the clear magenta. Let's do a couple here. And then we get lighter. Because, yeah, with all of the army painting series, and let's just take the dark sword alone. That's 26 episodes times roughly about two hours a piece. So that's, yeah, 
52 hours of videos just in Dark Sword right there. That doesn't include, oh, I want to say 60 some odd hours of basing videos. Just purely dedicated to basing. Because you know me and basing. I love me some basing. Yeah, the orange one there, that I just had so much fun. I, I saw the I saw the butterflies, obviously around here, monarch butterflies. And that's kind of the butterfly of choice around here. So I just had to do that. The dress ended up having the monarch design on it too. That wasn't part of the original plan. That just sort of developed. It also gave me a chance to try some of the new what, the Pro Acryl transparents. So yeah, I will put a link to the Patreon page when, when this is over with. So there's our one side painted. Now we're going to subtract these here. So what you do is you just kind of give it a little bit of bend like this. You see how it starts to loosen these guys up. And it's a little bit easier getting the big guys off. There, so you just pop them right off of there. Take him off, and then we'll stick him on our... You know, let's get the actual figure out of harm's way. Let's put him there. Let's do the same thing with our other butterfly. There we go. Yeah, I tried to... Well, I mean, well, I've been... I think it started out as the... Actually, the MacGyver of miniature painting. That was because I would use basically junk for bases. That Then it became... Bob Ross, I think the latest thing was actually the uh, the Chuck Norris of miniature painting. I think my favorite phrase that somebody created was, uh, he looks at unpainted miniatures and out of fear they paint themselves. That was one of my favorites. So let's add some of those little bit of light effects here. A couple of those. And we'll go with our dark Darker color around the outside, just like we did on the other side. And it, it's, it starts out pretty darn messy. I mean, if you, you can always go back to the beginning on this, of course. You can watch all of the live sessions. Now, if you do want to get the alerts. You know, oh, hey, George, how's it going? Um... I feel like two hours is more productive. <laughs> He's painting bugs. I'm just squashing them. Yeah. I get well, it all started out with having to paint a couple of hundred skinks many years ago for my lizard man army. And they had to. There was no way I was going to be painting them all at once. I had to paint them in between other things. So I had to somehow figure out a way to be able to match colors easily, just kind of after maybe months of not being able to paint any of the skinks, I said, how the heck am I going to remember these? That's when I came up with that shaded base coat technique where it was just some simple colors, combination of some glazing. All right, I think these, these little guys are ready to go. Now, where would we want to put them? We've got we got a couple of small ones here on this, but we got one on the staff. We got one on our Mr. Maybe one over on this. I don't think I want to go on the leaves there. I might throw another one on our staff, maybe. Let's take one of these bigger ones and throw that on the staff. So we're gonna take our take this guy. Try and give that a bit of a fold there. Let's take him off. Start tweezers. Oh, let's get some glue. And where do we want to put it? We want to put that here. A little dot there. 
Grab Mr. Butterfly. Maybe. Which side do I like? But I'm going to go with the other side. Maybe get him more extended. So there's another little butterfly there. Now let's get one more here. Again, get him pried off of this thing. Like so. Oop, gotta use my tweezers. He's just too darn small to grab at my hands. Where where do we want the next one to go? Maybe over there. There he is. And there he is. Come on. So there's another one right there. Well, if this were a chibi mini, I would put the butterfly in her nose and I, oh um do I have any of those? I don't know if I have any, but if I ever get some ooh, I gotta remember that. For sure I gotta remember that. So we've got one, two, three, four, five one, two, three, four, five, we got seven butterflies on here now. That that's uh, the dire butterfly army. Butterflies of different sizes. Now maybe we can go back. Let's go back just with our regular painting phase here and see what we can, what else we can add to this. There. Just trying to get myself a little more shading into some areas here, like. The dresser could certainly use a little bit, or whatever that may be. Now, like I said, there's there's all this foliage in the way now, so I have to be a little more careful about stuff. But let's see if we can't go even lighter with our object source lighting here. I have to be careful. I've got some super glue around here. We don't want to stick our brush into fresh super glue. That's always an unfortunate thing. But boy, this is. I really love these butterflies. I pretty much. It. What was it? I always had try to find an excuse to do optic source lighting. Now I'm always trying to find an excuse to add butterflies. Because, well, you know, butterflies. Might even just get a little bit of that into the hair. Not sure if we necessarily want to give the butterflies their own glow, but... I guess that would be the next challenge, is butterflies that are... They're not just glowing, they're actually... Like, casting a little bit of object source lighting on stuff. That would be, yeah, geez, uh, I've got some, well, they're not really chibi-style figures. That's that, was it Arcadia Quest or something? I think we have, for whatever reason, we have a box of some of those sitting around. Who knows, maybe they have to break one of those out. And try and do something like that. That could, it certainly could be interesting. Like I said, I haven't had a chance to paint a chibi figure yet. Just trying to get a little bit of dark into the mouth there. And even darken up the hair in some places. Darken it up, redden it up. 
feel like that contrast with the, the face a little bit more. I suppose I could do one more and have that sitting on her head, but that, that almost might be add a little too much comic relief to it. Because it's, it's sort of, uh, right now you're not quite sure what are those, well, hey, they're dire butterflies. I mean, after you got to take these dire butterflies seriously. I'm going to have to change the description to dire butterflies. I didn't know, maybe I can ask, I can ask Greg for a wicked elf to make really big ones. And then they could be, honest to goodness, genuine dire butterflies. Just trying to add some more lights and part to the staff here. It's the, not the sleeve, what would you call the, uh, cuff on the sleeve there's some more light so these are areas that I just I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with them but I wanted to make sure the butterflies got in there that's for sure because who doesn't love butterflies this certainly needs some more light But now I'm back to that cooler purple, because if we want our magenta to stand out, that purple's got to be different, a little bit different tone. Yeah, just speaking of the Bob Ross stuff, you know, he puts in the happy butterflies. That's where the happy butterfly lives. Well, that's this is where the dire butterflies live. Here, let's get a few more lights on the sleeves. But boy, that, I've kind of forgot all the stuff that we did already. We did the, we added leaves to the branch there to make it look more like an actual branch on the ground with actual leaves. There's been a lot of action here. And yeah, we did lots of painting, but we certainly let the basing also have its day. All right, I need to add myself a little bit of dark here in this part of the face there. There, again, a, a Reaper miniature. Pretty sure that it, it's got to be one of those. I don't know, there's what, the the Maggot Crown, Dusk Wardens. What the heck are some of the different... Oh, I don't even remember what they call them. It's been, well, it's been the month or so since... Re there's the Fish Guys, too, I think. Now let's get the ear... A little bit of light on that. Yeah, and I'm going to just make sure that the glue is completely dry before I start hitting some of those areas with the brush. There we go. A few more lights there. The buttons, the staff here. I actually have I have another live session that I did. Now it'll either be on the end screen or I'll do a link to it. It was on a Reaper Bones miniature, and I know they got the what the Bones Five or Bones Fifty Five or Seventy Five or however many Bones Kickstarters there's been. There 
we go. But like I said, way, way back, way back, long, long ago, like two hours and 40 minutes ago, that with this type of approach, you have to be willing to let it be not so glorious at the start. That's just the nature of the beast. We're going to take some of this green here. See what we can do here on our staff to get a little more shape to the back of this. River Widow. Oh, yeah. I could see that. Oh, the river. Oh, what the heck. Because I've got some of the more pirate types. There's, there's a few that I've got that are actually prepped and ready to go. Kind of like this one. That I thought could be fun. Now, not all of them can have dire butterflies, though. Oh, which of the new bones? I haven't actually seen any of them. We were at ReaperCon. We were in the Reaper factory for two days, and I never saw a single Bones 5 miniature because I was doing demos during the whole convention outside of the main hall. I, I hear there's... Oh, God, that, there's like a new female frost giant or something like that, I think. that That was the latest thing that I saw pop up on Facebook. And I thought that could be really fun with the with the basing side of things, doing the icicles, right? Doing a whole bunch of frozen effects. Maybe even some kind of translucent ice or whatever. So that could be fun. I'm gonna have to I guess I'm gonna have to go look at the Kickstarter. I have not done that yet. Uh, how many days has it been going? Uh, earlier this week or over the weekend, I guess, right? It started. Heck, I'm not even sure if I have any Bones 4 miniatures. Now, I do have a couple of Bones Black, but those were those kind of the pre-Kickstarter ones. I was going to do one of those as sort of the next paint your bones thing for a live session. Okay. Yeah, I can really see why I didn't want to get too light with painting the base. Now, we're going to go the opposite way here. Let's get some of that that's a little bit of the wild wood. Going to make this a little darker now. It is actually a glaze. It's just sort of a dry glaze, for lack of a better term. Now I'm going to orange that up a bit. Another highly technical, uh, oh, I saw you work, reprint, yeah, working away. I think, well, we were working with oils the whole weekend long. And I was down there doing demos till 3, 4 in the morning every day. And then starting it all way too early the next day, pretty much. There. It was just, I used to do the classes there at ReaperCon, but very few people were able to actually then see what I was doing. So the, the idea was, well, do the Fort Wapple thing like you saw, and that way I can do, well, demos kind of for everybody on demand, pretty much, too. I'm just trying to... <laughs> this is... Well, I was trying to wait as long as I could to add the foliage because I knew it would be difficult to get into some of those areas, but we definitely wanted to make sure there was time for doing all the foliage stuff. But now with our glowing butterflies everywhere, we can really start to assess, okay, what do we want to darken down? What do we want to lighten up here? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, that needs that. We need to get a little more of the magenta out here. Heck, I might even get some in the folds there. As I said in the very beginning, this one here is going to be a little bit less adding magenta glow to the rest of the figure. A touch here and there. But really wanting the the butterflies and that other stuff to be able to shine nice and bright. Speaking of shining nice and bright, I'm going to get myself some more lights down in here. All the while, carefully avoiding any potentially wet super glue. Oh, oh thanks, uh, thanks, Frankie. Much appreciated. Yeah, uh, gosh, there's getting to be quite the library of live sessions now. So definitely go back through those. Uh, actually, it's been a while since I did an oil painting live session, so I'm, I think I've got a Big Child Creatives and a few busts and, and such. And a black heart, was it a Drogon? One of the Song of Ice and Fire slash Game of Thrones dragons busts. I got one of those. Who knows, maybe I'll try that on Saturday if the Lord of the Rings figures either aren't here or I don't have those prepped in time. But thanks again for stopping by. Much appreciated. I am trying to work just a little bit of the brighter magenta over here. Like I said, nowhere near as much as I normally would, but some. Trying to get a touch there. See in the in the dress, maybe even a little on the face. I keep running into one of my butterflies here. Boy, those are really secure, I gotta say. You know, you think they're kind of on the fragile side and you might have to worry about them. I don't, I don't think so. I really don't think so. Just gonna sneak in a little bit of my Magenta here on the flowers. Maybe a little bit on my flock over here. Maybe not quite so bright. Maybe a touch on that leaf there. Wow, we got a little more here. Man, again, I want to make sure that I don't lose the fact that I've actually got my little dire butterflies sitting on the end of her staff here. Well, that 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 just has to live forever. Dire butterflies. That may be sticker worthy. Well, since this is a Reaper figure and it's where the legend of the dire butterfly was born, we may have to do a sticker for next Reaper Con. Something to do with dire butterflies. I mean, there's already the the painted gummy bear or the gummy bear painting contest which was born at ReaperCon this year so perhaps even the dire butterfly is going to have to be a thing I will continue to sneak in yeah I think over here I want some magenta 
just a touch of it there maybe even on the sleeve and whoops they're stuck to my arm so what you're wondering what those are that's what these guys are vellum butterflies from Wicked Elf the foliage from Green Stuff World the, the leaf cutters Green Stuff World I'm gonna add just a bit more magenta some of these. Let's let's brighten that up. Let's see if I can make that a little lighter. I don't even know if it's showing it's probably not even showing up on the orange or the yellow flowers here. I wouldn't be surprised. But it does give them one extra little hint of well, for lack of a better term, realism. I mean, how real can a glowing pink dire butterfly be? And this is where, uh, yeah, just going more with some glow here. I'm starting to feel that, you know, I don't mind having this glow reach all the way to the figure itself. Continue to add some more lights. I think down in here I need to actually get some lighter color down into there. That's better. And oh, definitely more of my lighter magenta here to try and make the staff again give it a little more glow you know we've got our dire butterfly there maybe I'll just have a few little magenta spots on my leaves over here Not too much. I don't want to lose the contrast with the green, of course. Maybe a few touches of magenta there. Now, what is this? It's a, it's sort of a pouch within a pouch within a pouch. Yeah, because to me, actually having these, this light cast here from the the end of the staff, just it, it unifies things more. Things don't look quite so separated any as, as they did early on. And I can always go back to my original color here and just sort of fade that out. So let's see, do I need to do any, I think I want to go at some of the wildwood. Actually going to use some of the shyish purple. That always makes a nice darker Tone on our reds here. There. Getting a little more separation with the rest of the face. A little more dark there. Just needed some. And I'm actually going to water that down to do a bit of a darker glaze around some of these elements needed some separation here uh, if I had a title this would be 
summoning of dreaded pinkness. It's the, the dire pink butterflies. Beware. They're coming to get you. Gonna have to demand that to be a, f a new faction at ReaperCon. Well, haven't they? They've made some pretty exotic critters. Now they just need to make gigantic butterfly miniatures. And I mean gigantic butterfly miniatures. None of the puny little butterflies. Let's get myself some lighter, a little bit lighter here. <laughs> Avoiding all the plants. And now, let's see, I'm going to take some of this here and get a lighter leather color on the straps here. There. Hmm. What do we want to do? This is a. Uh, I think it was the burnt red or whatever. That's the pro acryl color there. Now, I don't want to lose. There's some fun greens and everything that I've been putting in some of these spots. Don't want to lose that. Gonna make this strap a little lighter towards the top. That's it. And like I said, we've spent maybe, well, I think now it's officially over two hours on this. I could spend hours more Refining things, adding more butterflies, a whole bunch of things that I can do. This is very unusual for me. Normally, I'm not painting anything on the miniature at all once foliage has been added. This is certainly really different for me. That is typically the last thing that I do. But I really wanted to make sure that you could see the full process of painting, <laughs> painting the butterflies, because those are just so neat, so different. I want to, I know I've just darkened that down, but I also feel like I want to get a little bit of a highlight there. Now maybe I need to do something in the center of that flower there. This is blending in too much with the hair. Maybe we can do something with some some green here. Let's throw out some kind of green. And we'll darken it down. What do we got here? Oh, purple's going to definitely gray that down hey we just give it a couple of green leaves here and yeah was it seven butterflies that were added here yeah seven seven dire butterflies thinking I like the idea of those just contributing a little bit of a glow onto the figure. A little bit of object source lighting. Let's see. There is a... It's hard to reach. There's a little bit of... I don't want to stick my finger and smoosh one of those butterflies.
that is what I needed. A few more highlights there. I need some reflected light on this little amphora right here. I'm going to sneak that in there, make it a little lighter. Good enough. This collar edge, going to see if I can't, because it's just sort of a dot. I need it to go back a little bit further towards her neck. Ah, yeah, we need some light over on this side, too, little basically reflected light. And then, I don't know if these are some more buckles or pouches or whatever's going on over here. Not even sure if you can see it. Yeah, these are like little... Uh, oh, what was the that, that movie from James Cameron? What the... The glowing alien. That, that glowing tree. Oh, what the heck was that called? Avatar, right? The little glowing bugs, remember those? Wow, this could be interesting, I suppose, for a wood elf army or something like that. Because they've got those, those sprites. I don't know if the new wood elves have the little sprites that you can throw on your bases or whatever. I still have some yellow left. I want to get a little bit of a, a non-pinkish color to the flesh tone here. Now, yeah, Avatar, that's... Just as I saw these things, I thought, mm, that could be an interesting little twist to these. Now, let's get a little dark. i got to do something over here and this part of the fade. You can't really see it. Just trying to add a little more light there. Now, the one thing I have not had out here on this palette whatsoever is anything resembling... A nice, super bright white. Let's see if we've got anything that sort of suits that bill here. I know somewhere I've got ivory. There's, ah, we'll just... No, that's not as light as I was looking for. Eh, we'll just go with this. There. Mix that in. This is actually pearl white. It's a reaper color. It uh, it doesn't really necessarily. It's not a metallic paint or anything like that. It just has a little different. Has a little bit of a shine to it or a sheen. Because at this point, when you have glowing butterflies, you just kind of say, why not? Hmm, I'm going to make that a touch darker. That's, again, mixing in the fluorescent paint where I can. The other side of that needed to be lightened up a bit. I see some wood grain I've got to hit down there. Where else? I 
Yeah, so that really, boy, this is kind of your fourth section here. Now, this is something else, too. Okay, we've got our green here. Remember what I said to these leaves, if, if you wanted to, we can add some kind of, see, we can add some paint to these. Now, I don't want to destroy what's already there. I'm just trying to enhance that. But I thought on this side here, well, we're just going to give nature a little boost. Because why not? I think, oh, yeah, you can see that. But it's it's broken up. It's not. I don't want it to be this super heavy cartoonish outline here, because otherwise, then we could have just used paper leaves and said the heck with all the natural textures. Because you can really see some of those now. Even over here, I'm going to actually pick out a few areas of the rocks to bring out. But you can see how we don't see any of the from the sand and gravel glue, you don't see any kind of shininess on this. I definitely have. You have not seen the early stages of this. Uh, I'll do the rest of the work. Yeah, there's something much better. The detail, in all fairness. Well, it's you can only. Well, I was doing this really fast here. Now, if if this is something that's going to be for some kind of award, you know, oriented contest type thing, well, I'm going to be far more selective in my leaves, and I might even almost paint them like I did the butterflies off on a different surface or something but we were very limited here in, in scope and time and obviously a, a, a real tree you know you'd want to have many more leaves also and then I had to think well is it is it a tree that's been knocked down if it has, well, sh you know, it'd have to be like freshly knocked down, otherwise the leaves should be brown. But I just, I wanted to have that green contrast. What do we got going here? Actually, this is the first time I've really had a chance to paint the leaves. I really haven't had a chance to do that before. Let's see if we can add. Oh, yeah, so we can add some darker tones to these. Yeah, this is definitely the first t chance I've ever had to paint the leaves, and of course you can paint them. That's for sure. Yeah, you know the it, it's weird because you'll see them sitting in the but whatever little container you got them hold up in, and they look fantabulous. And then you get them out on the thing, and you go, well, wait a minute, they had all this color. What what happened to all the color? And that, that's where, like like you say, you got to give them a little bit of a boost. We got to add some fertilizer to them. Normally, I'll, I'll take the oil paints and do this because they they really seep in there and they have that capillary action and stuff. So this is kind of an interesting twist here is to actually be able to paint the leaves. I'm actually adding kind of a bluish green on here. This is actually kind of fun. <laughs> this might be happening more too. 
Just kind of going with what the leaves already have there. Wow, yeah, that's that's really different. That's pretty nifty. I'm going to add some of that green elsewhere like you do. Boy, there's, geez, there's more leaves than I thought. Let's do... Oh, I'm going to add some clear yellow. So we definitely had the, the Pro Acryl. This is the, again, one of the clear paints from Reaper here. And we'll mix in some yellow with our green. Touch of that burnt red. I know it's like we're taking the away some of the greenishness. Which, apparently that's another highly technical painting term, greenishness. Boy, we're just filled with technical painting knowledge today. Or maybe that's because it's too freaking late. <laughs> and I need to get me some sleep. Uh, we, he liked, he definitely, Werner liked to put the braids in the hair, so we'll we'll deal with that right now. Oh, with a freebooter of miniatures, I'm sure. Actually, I haven't seen what kind of goodies he's been adding to the the freebooter miniatures line in a long time. Guess I'll have to check that out. I know there was a, a lot of pirate themed figures. I forget what the... It was actually for a game. I forget what the heck it was called, though. Because we were going to incorporate some of those into our Wild West Exodus stuff. Back in the day. Yeah, we're going to... Well, geez. Palette Sludge is already a color. So we've... We've created pallet sludge, and now we've created greenishness. Well, orangey, I think that's another one of those sophisticated painting terms that you only find here. Uh, you don't, you don't get that just anywhere. You, you need true psychosis, I think, to hear that. And you'll certainly get that here. So now I'm just trying to give a little bit more of a spring slash summer slash whatever greenishness to the to the leaves. Boy, I almost wish I could have done a well. I guess I can do a before and after photo in a way, and I can just I can look at this myself, see what they looked like before. Oh, ah, here's my darker green. Now let's add a little bit of the air. to get some of those veins in the leaves. Yeah, that definitely, to me, that really gave those some extra dimension. And I sort of like that greenish color, so I'm going to work that back in retroactively here into the collar and some of these other areas. Yeah, always, well, the heck, now when I'm doing the regular recorded videos for the for the Patreon page and stuff, now I've got my little notepad next to me so I can write down the t-shirt-worthy phrases or sticker-worthy phrases. Oh, I'm looking in here. I, I need to add me some stuff with the skin tone back here. That's going to be too dark. We want to lighten that up a bit. That's back here on the, the cheek. You can't really see it because of the way I got it turned. Ah, that really helps. Almost a bit of reflected light there. Let's see if I can't 
get a little bit lighter on that cheekbone here. Oh, actually, oh, that's the other. That's going to be, it's either going to be a common, well, it's a combination dark sword slash basing. It's basically a little diorama thing. Here, let me see. i got a whole bunch of these here. So I haven't used these yet in a video. I've got those, but somewhere, aha, here we go. So I've got a dark sword figure all ready to go. So here's your, your lily pads and the lilies and stuff. So I want to do, I think what somebody wanted me to do was basically make it look like there's rain falling. And I thought it'd be fun to have sort of a pond with water and then have these guys on it. So you will be seeing those. Now I've got a whole pile of these things sitting over here. That is definitely another Patreon video. It might be a multi-part thing. Uh, just one part strictly on the basing and then the rest on the figure itself. I haven't actually done a multi-part Dark Sword video yet. So that should be, that could be interesting. Just trying to get a little bit more light to the, some parts of the face there. I suppose if I, and I mean, Izzy does so much, so much great concept art for these things. <laughs> I should try and find her concept art and sketches and stuff. So yeah, the lily pads will definitely be a thing. I just have to, like I said, I had to clear out a few of these things from the schedule before I could. And I also need to get another type of camera setup going for larger things. There's a whole bunch of moving parts right now, to say the least. A whole bunch of moving parts. Because I tried, huh, I just uh, sent that link, what was that, earlier this evening to the, to the patrons, this gigantic bus with all kinds of weathering powders and stuff. I was actually using the weathering powders as paint because I was using the pigment fixer. So that was something that I'd never put on a... Geez, last time I did that, only one other time, and it was one of those original painting pyramid videos. Ah, this is what I needed. Some of my greenish color remember what I was saying about the whole wood needs actually greens and grays to be more interesting well that's what we just added there speaking of greens we are going to add some green reflections onto this metal here nice even on our Staff. Oh, let's get some of the this nifty blue green into the collar here. Again, try and make sure I don't rip off any of my butterflies. These guys here. Don't want that to happen. Now those were two. We don't. Those are too difficult to my with my big giant fingers and stuff to pry off of the <laughs> there the original thing and where I was painting them. So I don't want to be breaking those off. There's a little more of my added green to the leaves. Oh, let's do a little more there. So see how that leaf just has so much more going on there. Gets a little lighter now. Not too light, though. 
put some more on my leaves. Oh, let's get some of that up here. Yeah, it's just a little too much purple, purple, purple there. So we're doing our little opposite with the green. Like so. And maybe even... There's so few areas of exposed rock here. Oh my gosh. I mean, I'd, like I said, there wasn't going to be much exposed rock, but boy, that really got covered. Now, speaking of weathering powders, that's the other thing you could use on the leaves, too. If, if you got a big old pile of leaves, say, on the ground or whatever, and you want to make them look like they're sort of, a, I don't know, a pile of rotting, dirty leaves or whatever, that's where some of the weathering powders, you take the pigment fixer or even rubbing alcohol, sort of mix that together in a bit of a, a, a wash, and you essentially just wash that over. Wash that right over your leaves, and it sinks down in there. It sort of stains the leaves. Gives them a nice, legit, dirty look. That is a very nifty little bluish green. Now, I, I really didn't think this was going to be an exercise in painting leaves. I thought it was just going to be showing you how to get leaves onto you, you know, a base like this. But these things have a way of morphing into other things. As other people that have watched these can tell you, well, it was sort of miniatures are, are like that. You have your basic outline, maybe. Like, ah, you know, I'd like to do this. But there's times where the miniature or whatever it is you're working on just says, nope, this is how it's going to be. And I, I see people get frustrated a lot because they're dead set on getting this certain effect or whatever. It has to be this. This was my vision. Well, sometimes that vision needs to get modified. Well, for your own sanity, there's that. I feel like I want to have just a few lighter highlights along that edge. Not sure why. Let's see if I can't sneak a little bit of red into there. Uh, I certainly don't want it to get to be too much uh, along the lines of the pale yellow, like my flowers that are in the hair. Okay. Couple of more lights. Let's just let's step back and just see what we have here. So we got a nifty little expression on her face. We've got the glowing effect here. We've got our glowing dire butterflies, all seven of them. We stuck some leaves on here, got those painted. Yeah. I'm just gonna let's all so thanks to Evil Elvis and Runs with Caesars. And let's see, oh and Frankie. Let's see who else. Uh, oh, and George and Mandalore. And we have oh, Gary, of course, Kamitrion and Felidus and Rupe and James. First, last. Just want to say thanks to everybody for joining in here. Be sure to, you know, if you can drop a like on this, that's always handy. YouTube and likes it and helps me out too. And you want to subscribe, that's great. And you do that, click the notification bell, and that's when you can find out when there's going to be more leaves and dire glowing butterflies and such things happening. 
So thanks again to Green Stuff World and to also Wicked Elf here. Again, these are it's where those butterflies came from. So I will catch you guys on the next one. Like I say, it might be Saturday. It could be sooner. Well, thank you very much. Oh, thanks, Mandalore. Appreciate it. I'll catch you guys on the next one.